draft has been submitted on behalf of Arab nations. The terrorist group Hamas bears primary responsibility. The resolution mentioned Israel five times. Yet, you couldn't bring it yourself to mention Hamas even once. Don't you know how to spell it? Those against? The final outcome of today's vote is extremely disappointing, but unfortunately not surprising. This session is another missed opportunity for this council. We are offering a separate resolution. The text as proposed does not reflect a balanced and impartial approach to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It is Hamas that has incited violent acts. We regret that the American text does not adequately reference Israel's responsibilities and obligations with regard to Gaza. The majority of those killed by Israeli defense forces in recent weeks were members of the Hamas terrorist group. Who is responsible for Gaza being blockaded by air and sea? Israel. It is Hamas that has attacked the very humanitarian access points into Gaza. Those in favor, please raise their hand. Well, and that vote you're seeing there coming after months of deadly unrest on the Israeli-Gaza border. And on Friday, a Palestinian volunteer nurse was killed. At least 100 protesters injured again. Tensions are running high where the Palestinian protesters were very close to the fence and the Israeli forces acting back by shooting randomly, uh, shooting randomly at the Palestinian protesters. This is one of the injuries that's going, heading now to the medical point, uh, East Gaza Strip. More tear gas is being fired on Palestinian protesters. As you see, uh, tear gas is literally filling the place. We're also targeting the Palestinian paramedics. Uh, and here's another injury that was uh, just right now from the, near the fence. And as you see, tear gas is filling the place. More injuries are coming, injuries after injuries. And most of the injuries today are actually in the right leg. That's how we saw more than 15 injuries in the right leg. The Israeli snipers continue to target the Palestinians uh, with live ammunition. And as you see, uh, the paramedics are, are ready to take every injury that arrives. Thousands of Palestinians continue to participate in the Great March of Return for more than 10 weeks now. The Palestinians are holding one message to the world, that they have the right to demand and they have the right to protest. In Kudri reporting there, well, the Israeli Defense Force said they were operating lawfully and in self-defense. Throughout this whole latest series of unrest, Israel has said it's simply defending its borders, accusing Hamas, which they see as terrorists, of using the protest as cover to attack. Since the start of those protests, calls have just heard the march have returned. Two months ago, at least 116 Palestinian protesters have been killed by IDF soldiers at the border. According to the International Red Cross, indeed, 13,000 Palestinians have been injured and more than 3,000 wounded by live ammunition. Well, the organization now then is trying to help some more. It's boosting its medical assistance program in the area. The initiative is going to cost more than $5 million, just tad over it, as you can see, over the next six months. It includes two surgical teams expected to conduct their estimating around 2,000 operations, such as the scale of what they have to do here. A 50-bed surgical unit, as well as additional paramedics and supplies will be on hand as well, if all goes to plan. A member of the Red Cross described the humanitarian situation in more detail in Gaza. The hospitals simply cannot grasp or deal with a bigger influx of violence. If we see the same amount of wounded arriving in the hospitals as what we saw on the 14th of May, we would simply have hundreds of patients bleeding to death in the parking lot. Tens have already lost some of their limbs and became amputees, and thousands have been wounded, including several thousands by live ammunition. That's something that is overwhelming for any health system in the world. The accelerated deterioration of the humanitarian situation has affected hospitals. It has, it has affected all key infrastructures. So 
the capacity of the system to cope with this with a new influx is extremely limited, and this is why the ICRC is as well boosting its capacity to answer with the medical needs here in Gaza. You know, when you are in an hospital, like the Palestinian Red Crescent Hospital, and in 30 minutes, 80 weapon wounded arrive. When you are in Shifa, and in eight hours, 500 cases arrive, this is something that is absolutely unmanageable in Moscow, in Paris, in New York, but even more in Gaza, which is already severely weakened and battered by the very difficult humanitarian situation that prevails in the street. Humanitarian assistance is very needed. This is why we decided to act even more. But on top of that, absent of geopolitical relevant decisions, the situation will only worsen and worsen. Gaza now is walking on the edge of a cliff.